to our next session, and we have a session on accelerating consumer demand and OTT uptake through experiences. Key providers are announcing the availability of media acceleration designed to improve viewing experiences for the OTT. Media acceleration can help OTT operators provide a consistently high and predictable quality of experience to which consumers are accustomed to traditional broadcast by overcoming many fundamental challenges of online video delivery. So for this, we have our esteemed speakers to talk on. But before I call upon the speakers, I would like to call upon stage our session chair. This session will be moderated by the one and only Mr. Anil N.M. Vanwari, the founder, CEO and editor-in-chief, IndianTelevision.com. Please welcome, sir. And now, I would like to call upon our first esteemed panelist for this session, Mr. Manish Verma, Head of Technology, Sony Live. Please welcome, Mr. Manish. All right, now I'll uh, invite our next uh, esteemed speaker for this session, Mr. Soria Mohanty. So he is the Chief Operating Officer, Epicon. Please welcome. And now I would like to take the honor to invite Mr. Vinit Mehta, Sales Director, India and ME, Endeavor Streaming. Please welcome Mr. Vinit. Woo, woo, woo. I request you all to please put your hands together for all our speakers. And now I would like to invite on stage Mr. N. K. Roos, COO Next Digital. Please welcome Mr. Roos. Looking forward for an interesting session. Yes, uh, it's afternoon, late in the afternoon and uh, we've had a great session before this one. And I'm seeing the room getting empty. Please go out and fetch all your colleagues inside. It's going to be a very, very uh, interesting session because these guys really work hard at creating those uh, customer experiences. So let's find out. I'm going to ask the audience, what experience are you looking for when you're using an OTT? Can somebody tell me? This is just to wake your guys up and make you all participate. Can I have a mic for the audience, please? Anyone sh raise your hand. And what experience are you looking for in an OTT? I've got somebody here wanting to speak, here. Yeah. You raise your hand, now you've got to speak. Now you're stuck, you raise your hand. What experience are you looking for from an OTT? Yeah, hi. What experience are you looking for? So the experience, first of all, has to be, you know, when I open up, uh, you know, an app, the oh, UI, are you, UX. By the way? Give it, identify yourself. My name is Kaushik Azardar, and I represent Khan Studios, so I produce content. And uh, of course, I've been a co-founder of one of the OTT app called Your TV. And uh, so basically what I have, you know, when we had a uh, little research done, so the first thing is the UI UX. That has to be very appealing for a person to go inside, you know, to, to see the content. And then of course, you know, how, you know, how the contents are being placed. So the UI UX. So I the think first one is UI UX. UI UX. So yes. Kaushik, pass it on to uh, at the back. Let him, let him tell us what, what he's looking for, what experience. Yeah, hi Anil, hi everybody. I'm Rahil Khan, I'm a screenwriter and film director. So when we go to any OTT platform, the first thing we look for is it should not bore us for not more than two minutes. If anything bores us for more than two minutes, we just want to either skip it and... So you're looking for content and story? And entertaining content. And entertaining content. Anyone else here? There, you've got two other people out there and there's one more person behind. Identify yourself and what, what are you looking for? What experience? One is not boring, the UI UX. Uh, my name is Deepak. I represent 4 Solutions. We are into media uh, uh, OTT platform development. When I go to any of the, uh, you know, OTT platform, what I look for is a relevant recommendation based upon my viewing experience rather okay. than everything coming to me. Okay. This person next to you wanted to, what are you looking for? Actually, I used to ask the same question. <laughs> recommendation you're, engine. You're looking for recommendation? Yeah. Okay, is there somebody else at the back? Yeah, over here. Hello. Yeah, uh, so basically... Uh, Where are yeah, you? Yeah, here. Ah, you're here. Yeah, uh, most of the OTT, they do have profile section. So I can have my own profile, but uh, I have, I'm surprised like nobody has a password or anything for it. So that nobody else can see my profile. Okay. Uh, at the back there? And what are you looking for? As Hi, this is Samir from Pocket Films. So I think as a consumer, one of the things that I would really look at is a buffer-free experience of a great quality, quality of a video stream. I think because um, 
your choice of con uh, content and recommendations are important, but the whole experience of viewing the content is also equally important. Yeah, thanks. I think we've done enough. All right, you heard these guys. Now, can you add to uh, what else are customers looking for, uh, beginning with Soria? Apart from what they've said. Yeah, definitely. I think these are the basic uh, items which has to be there in the OTT. But apart from that, the customers are also looking at beyond content. What are those avenues for engagement? You know, somebody may be looking for an AR, VR experience or an interactivity. Like if you remember Bandersnatch in Netflix. So you get to decide the, uh, the, the climax of the movie. So these are some of the experiences that consumers are looking for. And secondly, they are also going beyond, you know, experiences. It is about something very lateral. So, will I be able to get gratification by, you know, spending my time within the OTT? So, is there a reward section where I get gratified? These are some of the things yeah. that so we're looking Vineet for. So, let give us a choice now. What, what else do you think customers are looking for? You heard them all. Yeah, so I think, you know, uh, the way I look at OTT today, it's the three C's, right? So, it's content, commerce and community. And the way OTT has evolved, I think the latter two, so content is obviously a given, it's table stakes, you have to have fresh content being uploaded on a weekly or a periodic basis to engage the audience. But in terms of commerce and community, a lot of work is being done to create community features like say chat uh, on OTT or social viewing or you know uh, watching the game or watching the matches together with others. People have experimented with that. I think now with uh, the Geo, experience with the IPL where they had the multi-camera views, localization of content with the uh, multi-language You're giving feeds. away all the additional, let the others also okay. give their views. So I think uh, more than content, a lot of things matter. For me, the community commerce, commerce, community, localization are the other three. Okay. Uh, Roos? Hello. Yeah. Uh, we are in a very price sensitive market, Daniel. Uh, but when it comes to the ex uh, experience for an OTT platform, uh, definitely UI personal recommendation, customized re personalized personalized recommendations, as well as what I'm seeing is key in case if you get a very s seamless sort of a navigation and for content discovery, I, and and if the customer needs are taken care, I think he will come back to your platform. Fantastic, Manish, <laughs> you're running one of the yeah. uh, most successful OTTs. Most yeah. successful. I didn't say most. More successful. Yeah. See, I think a um, uh, few of the folks here mentioned about um, uh, app experience and everything. I feel that, yes, uh, consumers, when they are coming to the app, we want to reduce the friction um, to, for the consumers to reach to the content as quickly as they can reach because it's all about um, content and content is both AWARD and SWARD. Now, if a user is landing into the application, how quickly I can give them the access? If the content is paid, how quickly I can make sure that con users are able to sample the content so that they can figure out that I, which content I want to watch. If they are ready to pay, how I can quickly enable them to make the transaction successful. If it is a award content, how I ensure that advertisements are really not hampering the experience. We are sort of uh, making some innovation around it making it non-intrusive and, and things like that. So I think uh, reducing the friction is one of the key um, uh, area for us to focus. Fantastic. Is the, and I'll begin the other way, Manish with you now. Is there enough attention being paid in the industry right now? We're in the sixth or seventh year of OTT if you look, actually tenth year if you look at what, uh, Ditto TV, you know, the early days of, uh, or, and the early days of Star, Hotstar, when they set up the platform. Uh, so are we paying enough attention as a community? Is the OTD community paying enough attention to these? What about the audiences asked for and what do you think or, you know, the consumer is looking for? Are we paying enough attention? At least I can talk about uh, uh, myself. I mean, we, we every day, um, that's one of the core area for us. Every day in the morning, we go through our uh, customer complaints. We, we have automated uh, in-app. Uh, consumer feedback system wherein report an issue. I mean, we, we have something called users can go and report an issue if they are facing some performance degradation or viewing experience interruptions and things like that. We have a online, uh, we have a customer support. They can report either through email, social channels or whatever. We keep listening, keep monitoring and we take it very seriously. So every day in the morning, that's the first thing. 
we we uh, analyze the problems we uh, we identify the problems if that is required to be fixed from the application point of view from the streaming point of view buffering is one of the key area and we keep on i mean there is no silver bullet for uh, for reducing the buffering given that the fragmentation of the network and everything there so we keep on trying to find out the ways either optimizing our uh, content transcoding encoding packaging and things like that or consumer experience player is one of the key area so I think yes, I mean, we are doing, we are putting a lot of efforts, we are hearing our consumers and... Um, and even one consumer, you listen to every consumer or you receive... Every... Or you, or you, or you, or you listen to mass, a mass of complaints. Somebody e says, I'm getting buffering in Bihar, then do you go and talk to the telco or how do you deal with that? So consumer is consumer for us and uh, we see, um, I mean, the problems are mostly in tier two, tier three cities. And if we don't hear to those consumers, I think we'll never be able to give the experience to... A consumer is paying for the content, whether he is in Metro or in Tier 2, Tier 3, does not matter. Everyone wants to have that experience and everyone wants to have the seamless experience. And the same is true even for the Metro consumers. I'm not always watching on broadband. I'm traveling. When I'm traveling, my bandwidth, my device and everything is different. So I think uh, we don't differentiate uh, a consumer. Consumer is consumer for us whether he's a tier two, tier three town, whether he's on a mobile device, on a connected TV or wherever, we go through each and every uh, uh, feedback and we, we take care of, I mean, we take them seriously and uh, action on them. Yeah. So, Roos, you have recently yeah. launched your yeah. app. Yeah. And uh, one of the things we didn't talk about is making it available on every platform, whether it's Roku, whether it's Apple, whether it's uh, Android or whether it's uh, a Fire Stick, so, uh, is that part of your plans of your new app or are you all only available on Android right now? So, right now, we have just uh, launched last week, uh, we are partnered with OTT Play, Hindustan Times Group. Uh, Hindustan Times Group, they, if you all recollect, we, they started the app as just as a recommendation app. But over a period of time, they have really worked out into a nice super app. So, we had a lot of deliberations with other platforms and we, then we finally decided to go with OTT Play. Uh, we are in the early stages of uh, aggregating different aggregators into our app. Uh, by, by the way, he's becoming an aggregator of aggregators, which I find quite different from what the aggregators are doing. Yeah, so it, it, it's a, uh, we, we are into a distribution of linear channels and we have just graduated to a, a platform of OTT. Uh, it's, it's a learning for us and we are trying to see how we can be slightly different from rest. Definitely one of the idea was to aggregate the aggregators, but the other is also to start creating a customer centric content for my app and for my subscribers. We started with Android. Uh, we are in, uh, finalizing with, uh, with OTT Play for iOS and for uh, Samsung and for LG operating softwares. Uh, we definitely want to be uh, right now for our our basic network and it's a more of a B2B platform right now. Uh, we, we don't intend to go in a B2C way to start with. First idea is to go B2B and then start creating our content and graduate to a B2C app. Yeah. So now I'm going to skip you, Vinit, because I'm going to ask you to survey the land and give your feedback on what Sorya tells us. I think a very pertinent point. So. You know, the app reviews are very, very important for us because that's the source of truth and customer listening starts from there. Uh, not only we try to take the feedback from there, but also we stay ahead of the curve. So every six months, so Epicon has been there for four years in the market and every six months we try to build everything newly. I mean, we just uh, forget the baggage that we have built and we try to give a better experience. So that has been the, uh, the, the, the way forward also. And uh, we work on the UI, UX plus listen to the customers what the futuristic customers are also going to demand. So that also forecasting is required. And we, we have to also remember one thing that currently, if you take the YouTube base, it's around 450 million base, which is only watching AWOD content. Now, a lot of those users are also coming to the SVOD, SVOD uh, platform. So for them, it's a new experience. So how seamlessly we make the platform in terms of onboarding to streaming. So that's the key challenge out here. And we keep on innovating new things. Yeah, so Vineet, now you've seen all of the platforms, you're a service provider, uh, and you've been in the industry for some time. Do you think these guys are delivering on what they say they want to deliver? 
No, I think it's a tough job. I mean, uh, the as I'm a, sure it's a, as, tough a job. as a technology provider, you know, I think I see that our job is probably the toughest because we have to be one step ahead of the game. You know, so whether it's a new operating system launch or a new CTV launched, a new device access uh, required, a new DRM, uh, we're always playing catch up with the pirates who are trying to pirate the content. Uh, so there's always a chicken and egg uh, game in terms of our own development. We have to keep tab of the requirements of our customers and our customers' customers. So there's a lot of testing that goes on. I would say three things matter uh, in addition to the UI, UX, everything else. As far as Endeavor streaming goes, uh, you know, we are part of the Endeavor group. We power up some of the most uh, scalable and large platforms out there like the ICC, WWE, UFC, etc., large direct-to-consumer sports brands, uh, they come to us and say that we are looking for a technology partner that can do three things, is reliable, offers a close to 100% uptime commitment, uh, it does not fall uh, down or you know, does not fall across when there's tremendous scale, so is scalable and is fast. So, you know, when you guys are looking at launching your own platforms and even, you know, uh, having new innovations, these are the three fundamental things that need to be uh, checked uh, in place. So, one, you it's innovate. reliable. Second, S scalable. scalable. Uh, you know, India is about scale. You have uh, millions of users coming at the same time, especially for live events. And, and speed and fast. So, so, also nimble to innovate. Sure. So, have you seen that happening in India? I haven't. I haven't seen too many changes of interfaces, UI, UX. I'm not seeing that happening to a large extent. Netflix has one of the best uh, UI and UXs, but the rest of the players are still trying to find the UI and UX. If I'm correct, Manish might not like what I'm saying, but uh, neither will Soria, uh, or neither will Roos, but are they doing enough on that front? I think UI, UX, I would say yes, there is uh, room for improvement uh, across devices. And also, I think the challenge is that we're now dealing with not three or four devices, but 15 plus. You know, you also have a diaspora audience, uh, the Indians outside India, who are watching content on the Roku's, Apple TVs of the world. So you have to deal with a bunch of other devices as well. So UI, UX and uniformity of UI, UX across devices is definitely a challenge and an area that uh, folks need to look at. Uh, but I think also, you know, depending on the genre of content, interactivity features can be experimented with. We are seeing that in the West. So fan engagement, trying to create more loyalty and we having... Come to that. We can come to that. This is another... We will proceed with that. Now, okay, Manish and Soria and Roos, a lot of work to be done in UI UX. What do you have to say about that? See, I, I feel it's a, it's a journey. Uh, and uh, as uh, Vineet also mentioned, I think... Uh, most of the consumption in India is happening on mobile devices. It is moving towards the prime time um, on televisions, but it's still on the mobile. And I feel, and we all feel that less is more. We'll have to be more contextual. We'll have to be more um, connected to the users. I think uh, some of the guys mentioned here, here about recommendations and things like that. I think it's a continuous evolution. We'll have to be cleaner in our approach. And we take that as a feedback and uh, we, we work on improving the consumer experience when it comes to UI, UX. And as I said that, one of the core area for us to reduce the friction. How can I reduce the friction when the user is landing onto the app and make sure that he's as quickly as landing onto the content which is of his choice and uh, preference. Uh, that is possible you, to have a better UI, UX, cleaner UI, UX, better recommendation better programming, uh, publishing of the content, how I make sure that I am showcasing my best of the content which really interests to the users. And of course, after everything else, how quickly I am able to start the content and give them the seamless, no buffering or almost uh, zero buffering experience. So I think these are the uh, core areas for us to focus on and that happens every day. I mean, it's not that on a, on a once in a but, year sort but, of. But totally changing your UX and UI will take you months, right? It won't happen overnight. It is not only about we taking time, it is about users adopting to the new experience. So even if I can do it uh, quickly, we do not want that to be uh, uh, done. There has to be a gradual evolution and that's what people are doing. Okay, so now, now I'm going to stop you right now. How many of you will use Sony Live in the audience? Raise your hands. Uh, and how many of you will think the UI is good and the UX is good? Raise your hand. Out of all of them, you've got hardly few, very few. How many of you uh, use uh, uh, 
uh, DocuBay over here, or the Intent. And how many of you all think the UI and UX is good? Nobody. Gosh, you've got a lot of work to do, Soria. And how many of you use Z5? How many of you think Z5's UI UX is good? Just one person. Oh my God. I hope Z5 people are in the audience and they're listening. How many of you use Netflix? And how many of you think the UI and UX of Netflix is good? Almost everyone. So there's a lot of learning to be done. Hotstar? How many of you think Hotstar's UI UX is good? A lot more. A lot more. So they've invested a lot more in, in UI UX. It's very, very important. And how important is UI UX to all of you all when you raise your hand? All of... Not much, huh? not much. Not too many of you all think UI UX I, is good. I also agree with them. Huh? Manil, to be very frank, it's UI not going to drive... This is my little bit of experience I'm talking about. It's not that UI is going to drive an OTT platform. Correct me, correct something. me if I'm wrong. The, if you have a good content, for example, a scam in Sony Live, irrespective of the UI, people will definitely get into it. So content is going to drive personalization, I think, from my little uh, of experience, it says personalization and content is going to drive an OTT platform. UI is definitely important, no, no doubt about that. But UI will keep evolving more. I think it is personalization which is going to keep you with your... How many of you agree with Roos? Huh? How many of you agree with Roos in the audience? <laughs> Nobody. How many of you disagree with him? Raise your hands. Just content is going to drive it and uh, the personalization. No, more people disagree with you. So you've got to rethink your it. strategy. I'm, I'm learning. As I said, I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I think um, uh, definitely there's a lot of work to be done. So uh, there is no uh, way, shortcut in terms of finding a finding the best UI, UI, UX experience. So, the whole idea is that it's an ever-evolving process and we need to keep Manish on… what said. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, so that's the way forward only. And apart from the UI, UX, uh, the whole idea is that how do you curate the content? Now, personalization, localization are two different activities but done at the same time. How agile is the platform in terms of recommending a specific content type which you would like to, you know, watch? So these are some of the intuitive things which comes apart from the UI UX uh, that is that are important. Plus, uh, we also have to understand that, uh, you know, while content is there, technology is also very important. So we call it as a contact business. Uh, technology at the back end, the, the, that may not be visible, has also uh, has to be also, uh, you know, top class in terms of serving. Yeah, now, now I'm going to begin with you. Uh, in terms of... Uh, interactivity. We saw that we, during the IPL when Hotstar started all the chat, it really worked very well. So, uh, what other forms of interactivity can we uh, bring in place so that we can get more engagement and, yeah. and you know, immersive experiences? He, his immersive is something else, your immersive may be something else. Absolutely. So, that's, that's again very relative, but I think interactivity increases the TSP, the time spent. So, average time spent is around 12 to 15 minutes on any platform per day. Uh, for a u user to sample or watch, but obviously with interactivity it doubles up also or maybe it goes to 3x as well. So one is obviously the chat which is, uh, which is a very, you know, um, uh, very common and co common denominator for users to connect with. The second is also polling system, you know, there are many polling systems that happens that who is your favorite star, what do you feel that, you know, uh, should be the climax of the story. So there are a lot of polling and, and percentile system that also works in sports and as well as OTT. What we have also seen in interactivity is uh, in terms of voting uh, your favorite, uh, you know, star or a favorite, uh, you know, particular event. And based on that, the, 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 the leadership board is created. So, who is winning, what kind of gratification. The third thing that we have seen also with, with working with sports also is around, uh, you know, creation of AR, VR along with interactivity. So, for example, we have created, we are in the process of creating a a cricket uh, stadium which is into metaverse but we have you know interactivity built around that so we have done the sampling and we have seen a lot of engagement around that so these are some of the innovations that we are doing okay i'm going to ask the audience how many of you all agree with him how m nobody agrees with him raise your hand how many of you disagree with him raise your hands 
God, you're a lazy audience. You just have to lift your hands and say yes or no. How will these guys know what they're doing is right or wrong? We are, are basically testing and we are using it as a sample to go back and learn from. And you have a great chance to help develop better apps for yourselves. So, how many of you will agree with him? If you are awake, if you are boring, then we will get off stage. <laughs> how many of you will agree with him? Very few. How many of you will disagree with him? Raise your hand. He didn't understand what he was saying. Repeat what he was saying. Because you're not, some of them are not raising their hands. Okay, I'll give up. The, yeah. I'll tell you, so it, it also depends on the kind of content. And I think having interactivity for the sake of having interactivity is not the solution. There are times that the audience might want to just lean back, enjoy the experience without actually interacting. But if it's sports, it's a whole different ball game, right? So I think we see this, especially in Europe and the US, uh, where sports organizations, federations or teams or rights holders, they are morphing into super apps almost. So they have a Web3 component. Uh, for NFTs, they have ticketing, they have merch, or merchandise, 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 merchandise please, yeah. and then they have streaming all within the same ecosystem. So I think that's where the at least the sports industry is moving towards. And uh, to take that a step further, we also have the teams going direct to consumer, trying to build their own fandoms, so to say. So interactivity for sports is a lot more applicable in my in my take. Sure. Now I'm going to skip, you just launched, so I, you won't have much of experience in fan engagement. As far as you are concerned, he says sport, but I think there's a lot of fan engagement and community which can be built around even general entertainment. Do you agree or disagree? So, um, see, as a, as a content owner or a content provider, it works both ways. Whether I want to have the distraction when the customer is engaged with the content and want to have the interactivity at that point in time, or I want to have the contextual in interactivity or the engagement. I think what we feel that the interactivity and the engagement should be very contextual, should not be intrusive for the sake of having it, somebody is watching a scam and suddenly I, I throw up some interactivity saying you like the content, you don't like the content, that's not the right way of having the interactivity. Interactivity should be looked at from the point of creating a fan uh, base or I, we feel it like when the user is coming onto the platform, how to convert a user into fan by bringing him some sort of an engagement tool, by bringing in interactivity, which feels that users, users should feel that this is my space, this is my app, I should, this belongs to me. I mean, that is when, when he starts feeling about uh, that connectivity with the application, that's when I think uh, you are able to purposefully use engagement and interactivity. Otherwise, when I am throwing up the content, I definitely should not use the interactivity in the intrusive way. Having said that, we run one of the most popular interactivity platform in the country, which is Play Along, KBC Play Along, wherein we have seen for a one hour game show, our interactivity and the engagement is upwards of 45 minutes. Most of the users are connected and playing along with the broadcast show. 45 million. 45 minutes. Minutes, sorry. Yeah, most okay. of the users are going to the last. And how many are engaging? They are all engaged, right? They are how, many, how many are logged on to KBC? On so we have seen a peak concurrency of 1.6 million users playing the game show uh, along with the broadcast. Uh, and that's a fairly uh, decent number. Users are sort of hooked on to that. And that's a interactivity which is users are coming only for that interactivity. Because they are connected, they, are, they like to play along with, this, uh, with, with their uh, idol. Mr. Bachchan is hosting the show and things like that. And there is a different sort of engagement with that show, right? So that interactivity exists in the, in the, in the platform. But uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, it should be very contextual uh, and it should be uh, treated it that way. Yeah, if you look at Big Boss on television, Big Boss on OTT, it's a totally different ball game. Is it a different ball game in your case also as far as KBC is concerned? Or, you know, because on uh, Big Boss you get to see things you don't get to see on uh, television on the Big Boss OTT. So are you all looking at a different experience also to uh, drive that engagement or is it the same live? It is the same live but yes we have introduced the different uh, components of interactivity like polling and trivia and things like that because we have some time in our hand wherein we can do some sort of other stuff also before the game starts or after the game because users are coming even after the game also. 
So when they are coming, what sorts of in interactivity we can bring in, what sorts of trivia we can do, what sorts of polling poll we can have, and things like that. So we are doing little more than uh, uh, just the game show, uh, which is really uh, becoming the engaging factor for the users. So, but isn't there a battle between television and OTT? Television, your television guys want to continue to have an audience on television while you all want to increase, increase engagement on OTT. So how do you resolve that battle with your television guys saying, we need to get the viewership and you, you put them onto the OTT, they don't engage with television. No, so what we have seen in data is that, you know, close to around 65 to 75 percent of users uh, come to watch live TV. So, catch up is a very big, uh, you know, item within the o OTT, you know, content uh, bucket. So, we get the same kind of consumers who watch the TV coming onto the OTT and engaging for the live. So, uh, we get we, we get a wider uh, base of audience from linear to OTT. So the engagement, in fact, increases. They like their favorite shows, which is coming in the linear, uh, you know, fa half an hour ba back, and they can catch up also after one hour in the OTT. So I think the consumer stickiness also increases on the OTT because of the linear. In fact, it works on the other way around. And that's a very positive point where the interactivity base also increases. And the more time they spend, they, they obviously if it is, if the pro program is behind paywall, they tend to pay, pay up or if it is free, then the, obviously the watch time increases and then the ad monetization can start. So it's a symbiosis relationship where linear and OTT amalgamation happens within the streaming app. Uh, catch up and the female audience, what we have seen over past four to five years have increased within the OTT realm. Uh, while the TV set may be having some kind of, uh, you know, shortcomings where the, the, the remote with, is with one person and there are five people struggling to watch their favorite shows. While OTT is non-linear, they can watch any show uh, with live streaming or on VOD format. So format is also a very, you know, positive uh, part in the OTT. Yep. Anything else you want to add, Andrews or Manish? No. See, I think uh, we, are, we are the digital, so we would definitely love to have uh, people watching on digital. But I think, yeah, it's, it's a non-linear. People come and watch uh, as per their convenience. And especially live sports, we have seen that uh, more and more consumption is happening because it's as per your convenience you, while you no, are I'm, traveling. What about GC? Your general entertainment content, your fiction shows, because are we doing enough on that front or are we just, you know, still struggling to understand what to do with sport? I think GC is more of a catch-up, which people are still, there are a lot of people who are working and they want to catch up and we have seen that um, catch-up is happening um, on, on those uh, GC shows. Other than that, I probably may not have too much insight on okay, that. Okay, what, what about the original side? Uh, Your scam, for instance. I'd love to know, but I think Prime used to have it where I used to go and scan the act. I used to just roll my mouse over the actor's face. I got information about him on the side. I don't know if that's coming into the Indian uh, OTT apps. So, you're talking about the X-ray, but yeah, there is a lot of such information already available, right? You have the synopsis, you have the actor and uh, all other casting crew and all other information By available, scrolling over the not, actor's face. Huh, but that is not there yet. But I think uh, some of uh, those components… Because then you can I, go and… I'm not sure really how many times personally I have used it. Because w when I'm watching a good content, really I want to know who is this uh, person is at that time or… That's when I have enough free time and I just want to go and browse something. Uh, my sense is again the same thing, uh, it's a creative output. People have spent, I mean we have spent so much money to create that creative output. Do, really do I want users to be, get distracted at that point in time when they are really engrossed into the content, that's something. So for example, just to give the analogy, right, for example, there are a lot of people putting a shop, making their content shoppable by bringing in the interactivity. Do I really want to do that for my original content or for my GEC, which is like a daily soap? Uh, daily soap probably would be a better uh, place to do it, right? Wherein um, people are relating to the characters and people are dresses and jewelries and all other stuff. But do I really want to do that for my two hour original content, wherein it is more distraction rather than bringing in the interactivity? My sense is it will more uh, be well suited for the GEC shows uh, which is happening on a daily basis and things like that rather than having it for the originals wherein I want users to be focused on the content rather than getting distracted here and there. Yeah, Vinit, you want to add anything and then Roos? I was going to say from a sports point of view, I think, you know, there's linear and there's OTT but, you know, for example, if you have a sports team, the rights for the sports content is lying with the broadcaster's OTT, right? So, for example, Geo. 
uh, but then you still have Mumbai Indians who I think had a record number of viewers watching their content on the Mumbai Indians website and social channels. And they were just producing, you know, off-shoulder content, player interviews, behind the scenes, live streaming from their bus to showcase the players while they approach the stadium and stuff like that. So I think it's not only about, uh, you know, the GEC content from a sports point of view, also there are ways to engage your audiences with innovative content formats on your own owned and operated platforms. I think they changed the clock. I've got 144 minute, 1 minute 44 seconds. I just looked at it, it was 8 minutes. Suddenly it's become 1, but we'll take it that they want, that, that you know, we've spoken enough. Any last words around increasing consumer engagement before we wrap it up? Each I, one of you. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is all uh, about how to um, make the user engage with the content, how to interact and how to convert that user into, into a fan. And once the user converts into the fan, how I can personalize the experience for the users and take them to, uh, to the content of their choice as quickly as possible, reduce the friction. That's, okay. that's what. Bruce? Yeah, yeah. So I, I agree with Manish on this. Uh, more of uh, the personalization is something which I think uh, the customers will get hooked on to. Uh, content discovery, I think most of the OTT platforms, like in OTT Play, I say, uh, the content discovery is pretty good. You, as you said, you bring the mouse on to the uh, image also, the, you start screening, uh, start, you know, discovering the content of that particular actor or something. So, but, uh, content discovery is there, navigation is also there. Uh, UI, as a, maybe we need to still develop on each of the OTT platforms. Uh, on the interactive, uh, what I feel is the interactive part of it, uh, maybe all content may not, be, uh, we should not be able to do interaction. Uh, if it is particular related to some soaps or something, yes, gamification I see as a big interactive to come up. That's my uh, experience on the Beneath? app. Yeah, I think we must remember that there's no, uh, you know, uh, platform loyalty, there's content loyalty in India and in most markets, right? So I think on the platform side, uh, the endeavor should be to add the other two C's, so your content obviously has to be table stakes, it has to be of a particular quality, but then how do you create a community and add uh, additional ways of commerce? I think that's how to win the game for OTT players going forward, the three C's. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I think uh, given the part that the content is, is the king, but however on the platform part, uh, I think working on the basics are the first level of uh, you know, activity. Once the basics are right, then you have the monetization in place and then the innovation starts. So I think the valley of death is about making the basics right and earning the money and then interactivity, gamification, all of that can be sort of layered above that. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. It's been an interesting Thank session. Thank you so much, Anil. Yeah. Thank you very much. A big round of applause for these guys, yeah? Come on. Thanks. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for such a lovely session. May I request you all to please come forward for the photo op? And then we'll start the felicitation by Mr. Vanwari.